Good evening everyone. My name is Vijay Gupta and you are watching Biology Classes. So welcome to all of you in this lecture of Biology. Students, today I am going to start a new topic that is Microsporogenesis means the development of the pollen grains. This chapter is especially important for all my 12 students. It is uh, basically belong to chapter number 2, Sexual Reproduction and Flowering Plant and also for my NEET student and BSc students. The topic is very important. So let's start the topic. Microsporogenesis. Before knowing microsporogenesis, it is very important to know that what about the flower. Flower is the reproductive organ of an angiospermic plant. As we know that there are different kinds of plants are there in nature. In angiospermic plant, male and female organs situated on the flower. So the flower is the reproductive organ. In flower, male organ is termed as androsium while the female is known as gynosium. The androsium, a single unit of androsium is known as stamen. So as you can see in this diagram, this is a single stamen. And stamen is the male organ. So in this structure, in this diagram, this is the stamen. The upper part of the stamen is termed as anther, which consists of two lobes, which are known as anther lobes, while the lower part, it is, a called, it is called filament or the stalk. So the stamen consists of two main parts. The upper is anther while the lower is filament or the star. Now, in this case, there are two anther lobes. In most of the plant, there are two anther lobes are present and this type of anther which consists of two lobes is termed as dithecus anther. But in some cases like family Malvesi, the plant Hibiscus rosa sinensis, that is China rose, it consists of a single anther lobe and this type of anther which consists a single anther lobe is termed as the monothecus stamen. So these are two conditions, but in the anther, if you see the TS of the anther, this diagram is a TS of anther, then you can see these are two anther lobes and inside these anther lobes, four chambers are present, which are termed as the pollen chambers or the pollen sac. Inside the pollen chamber, pollen grains are produced and pollen grains are the male gamete and pollen grains are also termed as microspores. As you can see, these are the pollen grains and this is a single pollen grain and this single pollen grain is also known as microspore and the formation of microspore or the formation of pollen grain is termed as the microsporogenesis. It defined the word itself microspore. Formation of microspore is termed as microsporogenesis or you can say development of pollen grain. We will study about microsporogenesis and development of pollen grain. So these are the diagrams. Uh, I will explain once again. This is a single stamen. The upper part is anther while the lower is filament. In the anther, there are two anther lobes. If we see the TS of the anther, you can see there are pollen chambers inside the anther, anther, uh, anther lobe. And inside the pollen chambers, pollen grains or microspores are produced. And the process through which microspores are produced is termed as microsporogenesis. And if we see a structure of a single pollen grain, then you can see it is a spherical or oval shaped structure. It consists of two layers. The outer one is known as exine, which is rough actually, while the inner one is known as intine, which is a delicate membrane. It consists of two to three germ pores also, through which pollen tube arises at the time of fertilization. I will discuss it later. Inside the cytoplasm, there are two nuclei, in which one is known as tube nucleus, which form the pollen tube, while another is known as generative nucleus which forms two male gametes. In angiospermic plants, two male gametes are produced and the function of two male gametes I will describe later. So these are two male gametes. So basically exine the outer layer, intine the inner layer, the weak portion of intine are termed as the germ pore. Inside the pollen grain, two nuclei are present, one is tube nucleus which form the pollen tube while another is the generative nucleus which form two male gametes. So I describe all the diagrams and now it's all about for your notes. So in angiospermic plant, flower is the reproductive organ. All the angiospermic plants such as mustard, hibiscus consist of flower and the flower consists of male and female. So it is the reproductive organ of the angiospermic plant in which androsium is the male organ. Especially we are going to talk about the male organ. So I'm not going to tell you about the gynosium here. Androsium is the male organ of the angiospermic plant. The male organ, it is its single unit is known as a stamen. As I told you before, the single unit of androsium is termed as a stamen. As you can see the diagram of a stamen. Each stamen consists of anther and filament. 
each stamen consists of anther and the filament or the stalk inside the anther pollen chambers are found as you can see here inside the anther this is the anther ts of anther inside the anther there are four pollen chambers or the pollen sacs are present pollen grains or microspores are produced inside the pollen chamber and I, as i told you before pollen grains or microspores are produced inside the pollen chamber and the phenomenon is known as microsporogenesis and the formation of microspore is known as microsporogenesis which is our main topic and i will describe the microsporogenesis later in this video each pollen grain or microspore consists of two layers each pollen grain consists of two layers as you can see the outer is exine while the inner is in time the outer exine and the inner in time it is also consists of two or three germ pores so it also consists of two or three germ pores inside the pollen chamber two nuclei are also present so as you can see here these are two nuclei present inside the pollen grain in which one is tube nucleus which forms the pollen tube one is known as tube nucleus which form the pollen tube while another is known as the generative nucleus another nuclei nucleus known as generative nucleus which form two male gametes and which form two male gametes so it was the structure of male organ in an angiospermic flower now we will discuss about the microsporogenesis means how the development of pollen grains takes place inside the flower so first of all i am going to make a diagram which is which i will explain to understand the microsporogenesis so let's make a diagram Okay, students. So our diagram is ready. It's a very complicated diagram. So, what the microsporogenesis is? First of all, what is the definition? Microsporogenesis is a process in which male gamete or pollen grain or microspores are produced inside the anther or the pollen chamber. So, it is the mechanism of the pollen uh, of the microsporogenesis. So, let's begin. First of all, it is the anther and this anther is young here i made the mature anther in which pollen chambers are pr uh, produced and pollen grains are also produced but this anther is young so if you see the ts of the anther then it is you can see that there is no pollen chamber no pollen grains only there are two layers are present when the anther is young then there is no pollen chamber no pollen grain but uh, as it, it will mature then pollen chambers and pollen grains are produced so this is the ts of anther ts of young anther in which you can see there are two layers the outer layer is known as epidermis while the inner one is known as hypodermis now the hypodermis this is the hypodermis layer one or two cells of hypodermis becomes enlarged in size and known as archesporial cell as you can see this red colored layer is epidermis the blue colored layer is hypodermis now blue this in this blue color layer two to four cells becomes enlarged in size and i gave the name archesporial cells so these are the archesporial cells which further divides each archesporial cell further divides and to form two types of cells some are inner margins while some are outer margins outer side it made primary parietal cells while inner side it makes primary microspores in a cell this primary parietal cell will produce the pollen chamber while this primary microspores in a cell will produce the pollen grains or the microspore so first we will talk about the primary parietal cell so archesporial cell divides and to form primary parietal cell at the outer side this is the primary parietal cell now this primary these primary parietal cells further divides again and again and to form four to five layers of the cell as you can see in this diagram this is the primary parietal cell and it divides again and again and to form four to five layers of the cells in all the layers the lowermost layers becomes thicker and known as endothecium it is the main functional layer this endothecium is thicker and after some time this endothecium invaginated inside 
and to form some grooves which are known as stomium and due to formation of stomium pollen chambers are produced as you can see in this diagram there are four pollen chambers so here you can see these are the four pollen chambers so the stomium produce four pollen chambers after that the endothecium divides again and to form four to five layers as you can see this blue colored layer is, told, uh, is termed as endothecium here uh, I made the single part of this diagram because uh, we don't have enough space here that's why I made only this particular part here I, I could not make the complete one so this is the part of anther this part here so the endothecium divides again and to form four to five layers as you can see here this is the endothecium and divides again and to form four to five layers so endothecium divides again and to form two to five layers after some time the lowermost layer of endothecium the lowermost layer converted into tapetum which is which is again a very important layer converted into tapetum while the remaining other layers rest layers degenerated now this tapetum is very important because it provides nutrition to the pollen grains to the developing pollen grains so it's it is a very important question for your exam what is the function of tapetum tapetum is the innermost layer of the pollen chamber and it provides nutrition to the developing pollen grain thus you can see primary parietal cell made four pollen chambers and also the inner layer that is the tapetum now we'll talk about the inner side inner side primary microsporogenous cell is present this primary microsporogenous cell converted into microspore mother cell without any division as you can see archaeosporial cell produce inner side the micro, uh, primary microsporogenous cell i made with green color these micros, primary microsporian cell converted into microspore mother cell without any division and after some time this microspore mother cell divides and to form four to five cells so it divides and to form four to five cells which are attached with each other these are the four to five cells in this group one cell detached and behaves as functional microspore mother cell so this is the main cell which will produce the pollen grains so this is the functional microspore mother cell and this functional microspore mother cell divides by meiosis division and to form four haploid microspores as you can see here these are n in number and means haploid microspores half chromosomes are there so these are the chromosome which i made in detailed structure here as you can see it is a clear diagram it is not too much visible so the functional microspore mother cell divides by meiosis division and to form four haploid microspores which are also known as pollen grains and the male gamma so thus you can see this is the phenomenon of uh, microsporogenesis in which pollen chambers tapetum and pollen grains are produced so in the angiospermic plant formation of microspores or the pollen grain is termed as microsporogenesis and it was the mechanism of microsporogenesis i hope the whole topic is very clear to you still if you have any confusion any question you may ask in the comment section i will try my best to reply you thanks for watching have a good day